Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorr. In the 16 personalities, the ESFP is described as the most fun-loving and easygoing of all personality types. Knowing this, it's easy to get the idea that ESFPs must be the happiest personality type of all the 16 personality types. But is that really so? Today we talk about the dark side of the ESFP personality type. But before we get into that, let's talk some of the things that make ESFPs really special. So, ESFPs are dominated by being extroverted, sensory, feeling and perceiving. They are and have one cognitive process that is really, really strong and really, really clear and really, really obvious to everyone that sees them. And that's the extroverted sensory function. Extroverted sensing is what makes things happen. Probably if you look at it on a proportional scale, you'll see that ESFPs do a blunt majority of all the work and all the events and action in the world. So most of the things that happen in the world happen because of ESFPs or ESTPs. <laughs> so ESFPs are really the instigators or the agents of action. So ESFPs make things happen in groups and with friends and at work and in different situations in life. ESFPs are always busy, always doing things, always uh, hanging out with people or being with people or uh, going to places or seeing things. And so the ESFP is also a person that really, really struggles with sitting still. As an ESFP growing up, you know, dealing with the school system, that can be pretty tough, you know, because what ESFPs will notice is the school system, society kind of tries to tame that extroverted sensing. So you'll experience the pressure from adults and from teachers and from work to sit still for eight hours a day, you know, to focus, to concentrate. There is a group, a, a big, uh, movement towards individualism, which means, you know, solve your problems on your own, do things your own way, you know, and don't ask for help and be very, very independent and be very, very individualistic and focus on yourself, you know, your own life and what you do. But ESFPs are typically group people and ESFPs are probably uh, one of the personality types that learn the best true action. That also means the ESFP is probably the most prone to making mistakes. By going out and doing things, you're probably gonna break a few eggs in the process. ESFPs like to try things out for themselves and to determine if it was for them or not. So the ESFP is a person that tends to develop over time a vast sense of wisdom from real experience. So the ESFP is a very seasoned type that goes out and tries things and then from there learns lessons. So now let's talk about the dark side of all this. You know, the more you try to do things, the more active you are, the more you make things happen, the more you'll experience an inverse movement inside of yourself towards doubt. And that's tough. The fact is, ESFPs tend to struggle a lot with existential anxiety. And so what I've found is, behind that surface of fun, bubbly outgoingness, the ESFP often wrestles with a sense of doubt of life. Why are they here? What is their purpose in life? Do they have a future? And what is their future? And what does that future look like? What if they're just jumping from thing to thing? And what if there is no tomorrow? These kind of uh, crashing doubts of ESFP personality type can be a result of their repressed introverted intuition. Introverted intuition exists on the polar opposite scale of extroverted sensing, and that means the more you use extroverted sensing, the more movement you'll also experience unconsciously in introverted intuition. And now that gets a bit complicated to understand. What does that really mean in practice? It means if you're always busy, you bet your ass that introverted intuition is going to give you some nightmares, some bad dreams, some uh, unconscious struggles, and problems and you're gonna be like was that really me did i really do that did i really think that like where does this come from you know there's a desire to kind of want to erase that part of yourself to want to uh, pretend it's not there or to want to ignore it and so i see three different approaches to this uh, function to this pull the first is you know denial many is a piece simply deny that this function exists and that means you know deny all problems and they'll go away and you know, sometimes they do. That's the truth. Some problems do actually go away if you avoid them, but many of them don't. And so uh, existential angst can accumulate over time. And that's when you meet the deep, dark ESFP. 
So ESFPs, they kind of come in two flavors, you know, the super bubbly and outgoing and uh, loving and friend of everyone, uh, neighbor type, or the super dark and difficult and moody and what's the point style ESFP. And, you know, that comes, that happens when simply there is no resisting that pull, you know, like every action has a cost. Everything you do comes at a price. Being so fun and being so outgoing all the time can come at the expense of a price. And that is, you know, the price of doubt. And that's why it's so important for the ESFP personality type to learn to compartmentalize and to process their experiences. It's great to be a person that makes things happen, but you gotta take the time to sit down and think about what you're doing afterwards. It's fine to talk before you think, but it, you better think about it after you said it. Why did I say that? Why did I do that? Why did I make this happen? Things that might seem at random or things that might feel as if it wasn't really you or things that might feel uh, easier to want to ignore or avoid are often important. Those like outbursts that you have of anger or those things that you say in the heat of the moment in that situation often come from somewhere and mean something. So you better take your time to think about where that comes from <laughs> or you're gonna be lost. It's easy to fall into a state of doer autopilot. And that actually kills the fun out of this function. Extorted sensing is best when it's done with intention. And that means if you act and if you are fully present in what you do and very attentive and mindful of the fact that you are attentive and that you're active and that you're doing things. And if you are moving at a pace that is comfortable for you, that's the best. So as an ESFP, don't try to rush yourself more than what is comfortable for you. And so find a pace of action and doing that works for you. And that means, you know, if you rush yourself, if you pressure yourself to be super on or super attentive or super active constantly, uh, you're going to find that it's going to kill the enjoyment and the pleasure of everything you do. So... I said there were three ways of dealing with inferior interrupted intuition. The first one was denial. The second was the kind of tidal wave that swoops over and takes you over when interrupted intuition becomes too much to ignore. And that's, you know, when the ESFP like just shuts down. <laughs> what is the third way though? Well, the third way is <laughs> the best way. And that is the way of balance and integration. So what I argue that all ESFPs and ESTPs should learn is a level of kind of zen. So whenever an ESFP takes action or goes out and makes things happen, they should take action with a clear mind, a fresh mind, and an aware and wise mind. And that means as an ESFP or ESTP, it's very important to practice taking action with a clear head. So if you can first clear your head and then take action, that's the ideal course of action. And that means you want to learn the ability to hold both extroverted sensing and introverted intuition in your hands at the same time, one on the outer and one in the inner. So holding extroverted sensing in the outer and being present and immersed with an experience while holding introverted intuition in the inner and being able to maintain a form of existential clarity or wisdom in your action and in what you do is key to being able to hold balance in yourself. You want to develop the ability to form pathways and connections between these two functions, as many connections as possible, because when you're able to integrate and merge these functions and wheel them together, that's something that's going to set you apart from all other ESFPs and ESTPs, making you appear individuated or even possibly transcending the limits of your own personality type. ESFPs and ESTPs that are capable of this kind of interconnectedness between these two functions will experience less tension when they move and take action. And that means when you take action, there is no resistance from introvert intuition. There is no unconscious doubt that makes you sabotage yourself. That means everything you do complements itself. Extroverted sensing and introverted intuition are often treated as opposites, but they don't have to be. There is actually a space where these two functions can intersect, and extroverted sensory types are known to be 
amazing at using introverted intuition to accomplish great things. Take, for example, the example of Kim Kardashian. People often think that what Kim Kardashian does is a happy accident. She's just having fun and somehow she got famous doing it. But if you look behind Kim Kardashian, you'll see a person, a secret INTJ mastermind. So the ESFP Kim Kardashian is somebody that is capable of making and building hype for anything she does. You can see she wields extroverted sensing in the outer world very, very clearly. She's able to make things happen and to make everyone interested in her life. She's able to make everything she does seem fascinating and incredibly interesting. But beyond that, she's capable of being a mastermind. So the ESFP mastermind <laughs> is a person that is able to think and plan and to act with wisdom when she takes action. And that means when she takes action with extroverted sensing, she's able to also see and analyze the consequences of every action that she takes. She knows that there is a price to every action. She's aware of her shadow. She is self-aware of her behavior. And that allows her to act knowing how other people is going to receive her actions. She can do and say things that might seem stupid or random, but there is always a, a deeper intention. She knows how to use her image and persona and how she looks and how she appears to create impact and to create a fun and engaging situation. And so that's the recipe of success for the ESFP personality type. This ability to be an agent and a mastermind at the same time, this ability to translate everything you want to do to a strategy, to a plan, to something deeper and more future oriented than what it normally is. So every action you have creates reactions, creates change. These are my thoughts on ESFP personnel type. Do you agree or disagree? Feel free to leave your comments down below. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.